What's up everybody and welcome to this month's Patreon pick video. This is actually September's Patreon pick, but with all the craziness going on, preparing for 31 on 31, preparing for looking for houses, buying houses, moving into houses, cleaning up the old house, I have not had time to do it, so I pushed it into October. Liar! And this is going to be my top 10 sequels that are better than the originals. Now, honestly, I could probably give 30 or so. Like, this was actually a really hard list to make. It's kind of a popular opinion to say that, you know, most sequels are inferior to the original, but you would be surprised how many sequels match or surpass an original movie. With that being said, only like my top two are ones that I would definitely say are like the two greatest ever. Everything else could kind of go in any order. There's not necessarily like this one's better than this one. This is basically a 10 collection of movies with a top two attached to it. I could probably do a part two or a part three to this video. And really the only criteria that I had whenever I was making this list is that it has to be a movie that I think is actually a pretty significant uh, gain over the original film. Not something like Nightmare on Elm Street 3 where the first one and the third one are like this for me or a movie where if I rank it one day is this and one day is this. It's a very definitive decision to where I'm like, oh no, that is obviously the better movie. So once again, thank you to all of my patrons for all of your continuing support, not only just as fans, as friends, but also the financial support that keeps the lights on quite literally on this channel. Could not survive without you guys. If any of you are interested in joining my Patreon or just checking it out, look at the video description below. I'll have the link there. You'll see all the different tiers, all the different perks for all the individual tiers, and joining at any tier will allow you to vote for the Patreon pick, which is every single month the exception of last month. With that being said, let's kick this thing off with number 10. And number 10 is Blade 2. I have always thought that the sequel was better than the original. And I love the original. The original is a kick-ass movie. But 2, with Guillermo del Toro at the helm, this was a much more creative, much more action-packed, a lot funnier, and just a more enjoyable movie, if you ask me. I think it's a little bit more well-rounded. The first one, not taking anything away from it, I love it. It's really grounded in lore and setting up with the world building and then you have like the introduction of like the vampire rules and the different houses and the different families and all the motivations with Deacon Frost. You get into this one and this movie just grabs you by the throat literally and just sinks its teeth in with the reveal of the main villain in the first couple of minutes. This very different type of vampire with these reapers where their faces open up like the predator and they grab you on both sides of the neck and this little fucking flower thing goes and they have this virus and it's just a very creative, unique take on vampires. I'm a vampire fanatic. I've seen so many vampire films and this is literally one of the most unique ever. Blade, Wesley Snipes, he's awesome in this. He's at the top of his game with the humor, with his rivalry with Ron Perlman the action sequences, with the exception of a couple of like shitty early, you know, mid 2000s CGI scenes. There's some really good action. There's some really good back and forth. I actually really like the return of Whistler, um, even though it kind of makes the, that scene in the first one not as emotional of a moment as it should have been. I do like the fact that he's back because I love their, their rapport with each other. Uh, I even like fucking Walking Dead boy, Daryl coming into here, um, Norman Reedus. <laughs> I even like his addition to this movie. So Blade Two, one of my favorite sequels of all time. I do think it's a significantly better movie than the first one, and that's number 10. Number nine is going to be Child's Play Two. Now I am in the camp where I actually think Child's Play Two is significantly better than the original film. There's a lot of Child's Play fans out there, just horror slasher fans that hold the original film in much higher regard than I do, which again, I love it, not taking anything away from it, but I've always grown up to be, you know, with more love for Child's Play 2 and Child's Play 3 than I ever had for the original film. I always liked the Chucky movies to be more about Chucky. They didn't quite realize what they have with the first movie, obviously, so that one's more mysterious, more POV shots. 2 and 3 is just Chucky Unleashed, and Child's Play 2 is the best of the franchise, if you ask me. More Chucky, more one-liners, Andy's a little bit older, his acting is significantly better in this one. I like the storyline line where he's now this foster kid. His foster parents think he's this fucked up little kid and don't understand anything that he's talking about with this doll and they think he's ridiculous. You get the relationship between him and his foster, you know, halfway sister with Kyle, who's a really great character, which even though I don't really love what Dan, Don Mancini is doing to this series, I would be welcome to seeing what he had in mind for bringing her back at the end of Cult. Conversation for another day. Great kills. 
fantastic third act. One of the greatest third acts in slasher history, if you ask me. That toy factory, regardless of the reasons that they got there, Brian, it's awesome when they do get there. You have the showdown, you have Chucky that has finally got Andy where he wants him, and it's too late. And the last 10, 15 minutes is just Chucky trying every single way that he can to murder the shit out of Andy for revenge. I love this movie. People might be surprised it's down this low, but like I said, except for the top two, this is kind of a, a free-for-all top 10. Child's Play 2 is the shit, and it's number nine. Number eight, I think this one's kind of a controversial opinion, but uh, you guys know me, I don't give a fuck. 28 Weeks Later. Now, I like 28 Days Later. That's a movie that when it first came out, I was young, I wasn't really into artsy kind of films or foreign films or anything like that. I was still very immature with my movie taste, so it took me a long time to watch 28 Days Later. Love that movie, it's great. 28 Weeks Later, though, I have much more of a connection with. I actually saw this in the theaters with one other person. I remember, just like it was yesterday, it's summertime, I didn't really have a whole lot of friends because I had just moved to Georgia, and my mom would go to work in Savannah, which is like 30, 40 minutes away from here. There was two movie theaters behind the mall, so sometimes I would have her drop me off at the mall. I would go to watch a movie, go hang out at the mall, the food court, the arcade, go back and see another movie. 28 Weeks Later was the first movie that I did that with, and this opening 10 minutes or so, scary as shit. I just love it. I love the way that, you know, they kind of abandoned the gritty griminess that they kind of went for with the, the style of camera work in the first film, but I'm actually a fan of that. I don't think it ages very well in the first film. You get to 28 weeks later, it's much more global now. You have this military that's kind of encamping this entire city. I believe it was in London. I'm gonna get corrected down below. It's been a couple years since I've seen it. But you have these two kids where their father comes back who abandoned their mother, but he says, oh, you know, she died tragically or whatever. And then the mother comes back and it's just drama ensues from there. And one little kiss of forgiveness just sets this whole city ablaze. You get fast zombies, which are my favorite. You get tons of gore. You get a tons of really scary, tense sequences. I love Jeremy Renner's character in this. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. And for me personally, it is better than 28 Days Later. So number eight is 28 Weeks Later. Number seven is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Yes, this is my favorite of the non-remake Friday the 13th films. There's quite a few movies that I could pull out of the Friday the 13th franchise that I think would be better than the original. There's at least three or four of them. But uh, being the best of the franchise, Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, to me, is a significantly better movie than the original. The original, it has its nostalgia, it's got its classic appeal, it certainly has some importance for what it did for this franchise, you know, just ripping off Halloween, making it a little bit more B-movie, and now you have one of the biggest arguably the biggest slasher franchise of all time but the final chapter actually feels like a film if that makes any sense it feels like a director's movie there's actually some good camera work you get like crane shots and everything where you're like what the fuck production value in a friday the 13th movie who to thunk it you get one of the best jasons my second favorite jason in fact with ted white awesome kills and i just ranked the 181 kills last year and my number one did come from this film so I love all the kills, the gore, Tom Savini brought it as always. The way that they killed Jason, this was supposed to be the final Friday, which is hilarious in hindsight. Uh, awesome kill there. You get Tommy Jarvis with Corey Feldman, which is a great character. And even just the teenage characters, the cannon fodder of this film. I think it's the best cast of any of the Friday the 13th films. Even the Friday the 13th remake, which I love. I think this cast of characters is the most enjoyable, the most relatable, and the least annoying of any of them. So this is actually a movie that I've grown to love. And you know, maybe over time, this might even overtake the remake for me as my favorite Friday the 13th film. That's how much I love it. And I do think it is a huge step above Friday the 13th. Number seven, final chapter. Number six is Fast Five. Holy shit. Nobody expected this movie to be as kick-ass as it was. Now, I'm somebody that I actually enjoy the early Fast and the Furious films. I know they seem extremely weak and weird in the context of this franchise now, which is basically superhero films. But I grew up where, you know, I was like maybe 9 or 10 years old when the first one came out. It was obviously a rip-off of Point Break, but I still enjoyed it because I was a big Paul Walker fan. Vin Diesel was cool. He was kind of like the new action hero that never quite got there. Uh, enjoyed that one. 
Never really loved the second one, but still dumb fun. Enjoyed Tokyo Drift more than I ever thought I would. Loved the fact that they brought everybody back for Fast and Furious. And then when you got to Fast Five, you had the addition of The Rock. You had all of the cast of characters coming back together from all of these movies, including a lot of the cast from the first movie. And this is just one of the greatest action films of all time. And I think it's by far the best of this entire franchise. I think that The Rock adds something great to it that kind of antagonistic relationship between him and Toretto. That fight scene is badass. So many great car chases and car sequences. I even like the simplistic plot about let's rob this evil bastard and you know take him for everything that he's got. All the while you got Rock coming after him with everything that he's got. It's just a badass movie. And I love it so much to the point where even though I still enjoy them for how ridiculous they are, after Fast Five, it has gone on a steep decline for me with how much I've enjoyed these movies because they never quite got it that good again. They never quite got that just right amount of over the top. You get to Fast and Furious 6, Furious 7, even Fate of the Furious, probably the worst of them all as far as this, and it's just like stupidity through the fucking roof. But Fast Five had just the right amount of all of it. Number five. Basically the entire Mission Impossible franchise, if we're going to be honest, with the exception of two. But um, I will say Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol to follow my rule with Friday the 13th. That one is my favorite. However, like I was saying with my criteria, I mean, you get to, you know, Mission Impossible 3 onward, and you're talking about razor thin differences because that's a franchise that just arguably gets better with every single movie. I mean, to the point where Fallout is probably most people's favorite, but I still have a touching spot for uh, Ghost Protocol. Touching spot. Yeah, we're gonna edit that. I still have a soft spot for Ghost Protocol because for me, Mission Impossible 3 took a while to grow on me. I thought it was good at the time, but this was during the couch jumper era of um, Tom Cruise. So there was a little bit of weirdness surrounding him in this movie. Ghost Protocol was the movie where it had been just long enough since that that I'm starting to take him seriously as an actor again. Awesome sequences. I mean, that Dubai sequence, you could probably say that's the best sequence in the entire franchise, and Fallout has quite a few contenders. Uh, I love the team. That is my favorite team of the MI6 or MIF uh, people where you got Paula Patton, you got the introduction of Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg joins in for the fun in the field. I, I love the whole sequence where they have that camera where they're making the hallway look a certain way and then he stands up starts like picking his nose and his face is the whole tarp. So many great moments. This movie to me is always my favorite even over Fallout even though it's razor thin because I love the humor. This movie has a little bit more humor, a little bit more heart to it, where the further movies from here, the Macquarie movies, are certainly more gritty and serious and not a whole lot of room for humor. Still awesome, but Ghost Protocol is my favorite. And even though I do have a lot of nostalgia and I do really enjoy still the Brian De Palma original Mission Impossible film, it's not even in the same league as pretty much the rest of this franchise. Number four, which is another one that's going to be heavily debated in the comment section, so bring it! Aliens. I'm somebody that grew up on Aliens. I would watch Aliens with my father once or twice a year. This was one of those movies that we just bonded over and constantly rewatched. I mean, we had the extended cut on Laserdisc. We'd always put that in to see the extra scenes. I didn't see Ridley Scott's Alien until I was a teenager. We didn't have it on VHS. My dad was never really a big fan of the first one because it was a lot slower. There's one Alien. I think he kind of was more uh, the action sci-fi direction that you got. Um, in Aliens. So I watched Aliens a lot and this was always the best of this franchise for me. Now I have a lot of appreciation for Alien, don't get me wrong, it's a great, it's a brilliant film. It was, you know, for the time, probably scary as shit, but when you grow up on Aliens and then try to watch Alien, it does feel like you're downscaling a bit in the entertainment department. Now that can be debated, some people will prefer the isolation, the claustrophobia, the, the horror aesthetics of Alien and not really care for the more you know, popcorn, blockbuster feel to Aliens, but I'm heavily in the Aliens camp. So Aliens is a significant jump over Alien for me. I love her placement in this crazy ass situation where she's surrounded by these badass Marines and she's still the most badass one of all of them. There's some great commentary in here with like the theme of motherhood with her and the queen at the end and that big face off and trying to save Newt to kind of, in a way, make up for her loss of her daughter who died of old age while she was in cryostasis. There's, you get Michael Bean and you even get Lance Henriksen as a great character, which is a great thing where she's scared of him because he's an android because of her whole situation in Alien where the android went fucking nuts and she doesn't quite trust him. I could gush all day on how awesome Aliens is. You know how awesome Aliens is. 
Depends on what camp you're in, but Aliens to me is better than the original, and it's number four. Number three, Captain America Winter Soldier, which might be my favorite comic book film of all time. I fucking love this movie. Now, I thought that the first Avenger was great, and I actually think that it's slightly underrated in most MCU rankings. A lot of people have it very down low, and I actually think it's a great period piece. I think he's a great character. He is my favorite Avenger. Uh, there's a lot of things that I love about that first film. I was not ready for how much better Winter Soldier was going to be. Some of the greatest action sequences I've ever seen in my life, and not just in a comic book film, period. That elevator scene might be my favorite action scene of all time. It, it, it just kicks ass. Every time I watch it, I like I get goosebumps. I'm like, yeah, let me get in there. I want to fight. You have the whole thing with Winter Soldier, that whole reveal, which I knew going into the movie, and that still tells you how great of a story it is that I knew the identity of the Winter Soldier and it didn't take away from the mystery of the movie or the ride the movie took you on. Nick Fury's placement in the movie was great. I love the partnership between Captain America and Black Widow. You even get the secondary villain with um, Alexander Pierce, I believe his name was. Robert Redford, another great MCU villain that's highly underrated. That whole 70s spy thriller vibe with this was great. The introduction of Falcon, another great introduction. This movie's awesome. This movie is fucking awesome. It's my favorite MCU movie. Huge leap over Captain America, the first Avenger, number three. Number two for me is one of the biggest pleasant surprises that I've ever had in my life, and that is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now, I'm a Planet of the Apes fan. I have not like necessarily grown up with a lot of the original movies, but I always watch the original with my dad. I've seen a couple of the other ones. I think he had Conquest, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes on Laserdisc. Uh, so I've always been a fan of that franchise, that whole world. Hated the Tim Burton movie. And then eventually you get this rise of the Planet of the Apes. And everybody, everybody, I don't care who you are, you watch the trailer or you heard the announcement, we're going to do the CGI, you know, reboot of the planet. And you're like, oh, fucking God. You didn't learn your lesson from that Burton shit. Really? We're going to do this again? Fine. And then you go to see Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and I was blown away at how incredible that movie was. I think that it's fucking awesome. It's fantastic. And then when Dawn was coming out, I was like, okay, look, if it's just almost as good as Rise, I'll be okay. But this is a tall order. Like Rise was just so incredible. I don't know if Dawn can get there. Dawn might be twice as good as Rise of the Planet of the Apes as far as I'm concerned. This movie is one of my favorite films of all time. Top 10, easy. I love how they focus more on the apes and the world that they have built since Rise, which is like, I think, 10 year gap. This whole virus has wiped out the rest of the world, so the humans are kind of just in little survivor camps. And then you get the humans finally interacting with the apes again, where you have Caesar that still has that love for his, his friend, uh, James Franco, and knows that humans have a good side. Then you have Koba that has only known pain from humans, and you have that kind of tug of war for power. The whole relationship with Jason Clark and coming in as kind of like the face of the humans, who's a good guy, but he's got a lot of dickheads behind him. And you even have like Gary Oldman, who is could easily be a mustache twirling villain in a lesser film, but you understand his motivations 100%. And if you were in his shoes, you would probably do the exact same thing. It's a phenomenal movie. I mean, special effects. Motion capture with uh, Andy Serkis cannot get any better, but just the story you go on with Caesar all the way to the third act where he gets betrayed by Koba and has to come back and reclaim his throne. I almost get misty eyed just talking about it. I love this movie and it was almost number one. That's how much I love it. Number two, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And even though this might be redundant because this was number one on my most recent top 10 video, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, without a doubt, is my favorite sequel of all time. And it's absolutely my favorite sequel that is better than the original. I mean, this movie, Terminator is the shit. The original Terminator is badass. It's a great slasher film. It's a great sci-fi film. You get the introduction of Arnold Schwarzenegger, which catapulted his badass career. Linda Hamilton is Sarah Connor. I mean, you get Kyle Reese and Michael Bean. Everything about that movie is just incredible. Terminator 2, easily twice as good. I mean, I, I love Terminator 2 that much. This is one of those movies, just like Lost Boys and Child's Play and Nightmare on Elm Street, that I just wore the VHS tape out when I was a kid. Constantly on rewatch, constantly rewinding, putting it back in, quoting lines, wanting to be the Terminator, wanting to stand there with my toy minigun whenever he's taking out all the cops. Zero casualties. Trust me. I love this movie. Better action, 
the whole switch with taking the T-800 and making him the savior and not the antagonist this time. And then you have the antagonist of the T-1000, which is still by far the best villain in the Terminator franchise. Sarah Connor, Linda Hamilton, more of an action hero, going for that Ripley side of things. She is my favorite final girl. I had that in another top 10. I love this movie. It's a perfect film to me. It might be in my top three films of all time. That's how close I am to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And it's easily the number one sequel that is better than the original. Well, that's it, guys. That's my top 10 sequels that are better than the originals. What are yours down below? Like I said, there's a lot of them. This was this could have been a top 30 video because there's quite a few. Let me know yours down below. Are there some that you absolutely wholeheartedly disagree with? Let's debate that down below. Friendly, please. Not like a dickhead. You can do it. Thank you so much to my patrons, as always, for the Patreon pick, for your continued support. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. You can check out all my other awesome content and keep your eyes peeled for next month's Patreon pick video. Who knows what that might be. And as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.